Modems and routers can seem like pretty basic pieces of equipment, but determining what you need can be tough. Well, no need to fear, Riley from Switchful is here, and let's talk about how to choose a modem and a router. One question that is often asked, do I need a modem? Do I need a router or both? Well, before we dive into this question, let's define exactly what a modem and router are. A modem is responsible for translating raw signal from your internet service provider into something your device can understand. A router then takes the signal and broadcasts it on a wireless network that devices can connect to. With the router being one of the most universal pieces of internet equipment, we generally suggest you buy your own first. You can almost always combine your router with your ISP's modem. We only suggest buying your own modem if your provider charges you a rental fee or if you need something a little extra high tech. Here are some things to consider to help you pick the right router. Number one, price. Most routers range from $100 to over $300. Consider your budget to narrow down your options. Number two, supported speed. It's important to ensure your router can support the speed of your internet service. If you have gigabit speeds and your old router can only handle up to 500 megabits per second, then you might be wasting your money for speed you can't even access with the equipment you have. When it comes to router speed, an important spec is the wireless standard used. This will be listed as 802.11, followed by some letters. Now, most routers will say the speed they support, but here are some examples of what you might see. 802.11n, known as Wi-Fi 4, this can handle speeds up to 300 megabits per second. Another is 802.11ac, or Wi-Fi 5, and can handle speeds up to 1.3 gigabits per second. Last is 802.11ax, or Wi-Fi 6, which can handle speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Wi-Fi 6 is the most recent standard, however, Wi-Fi 5 will get the job done for less. Now, when it comes to coverage area, Wi-Fi routers should clearly state the square footage they cover. However, the affected range of the router can be obstructed by walls, so there may be parts of your home that have a weaker signal. There are routers that offer a more powerful coverage, but this will come with a price increase. The other alternative is mesh networks. This is a group of devices made up of a wireless hub and several satellite nodes to help spread the signal. Now let's talk about modems. The price for a modem can run anywhere from $50 to $250. More money equals better features and more power. The most important thing when choosing a modem is ensuring that it'll be compatible with your current ISP. For example, if you have cable network like Xfinity, you'll need to get a DOCSIS modem. For DSL providers like CenturyLink, you'll need a DSL modem. Finally, you want to make sure that the modem supports at least your current internet speeds. We hope this video has been helpful in choosing a modem or router. So what are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to learn more about modems, routers, or internet services, check us out at switchful.com. We'll see you next time.